But first up on the bulletin, let's tell you how it's going to be a monumental day and an achievement for ISRO and a day of pride for India. ISRO Aditya L1 mission is on the brink of a solar breakthrough. The spacecraft is inching closer to its destination and will be placed into its final orbit today. Launched on 2nd of September, Aditya is on the cusp of entering what's been termed as a halo orbit around the Lagrange Point 1, a unique position within the dynamic Sun-Earth system. Now remember, L1, the Lagrange point 1, stands out amongst the five points in this system where the gravitational forces between the Earth and the Sun reach equilibrium, thereby making it a relatively stable and ideal atmosphere for the spacecraft to observe from that position. In fact, it is roughly positions about 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth. This location, however, is merely about 1% of the entire distance between the Earth and the Sun, even though it seems phenomenal. But let's also remind you how this is the vantage point from where the aircraft is going to be observing the Sun. Getting into the halo orbit is going to be challenging, and it is for the first time that ISRO will be attempting such a maneuver. So Aditya has already successfully completed 125 days in space already. In fact, from September 18th, that is just 16 days into its journey. Well, Aditya has already started collecting scientific data and has been sending imaging of the sun as well. It has so far been sending in sneak peeks into a high energy X-ray of solar flares, full solar disk images and others. Now remember, amongst the crucial objectives, the mission will also help in reading the directionality of the solar winds, which enables us in getting early information of the space weather events. In fact, let me go across to Pinky Rajpurohit, who's joining us live. In fact, she's also been joined by R.C. Kapoor. He is uh, the space scientist as well as an astronomer. Pinky, you must ask him to explain to everyone, the layman out there, the significance of today. The fact that it is going to be launched into the final, after the final maneuver, launched into the very spot from where it is going to get an unhindered view of the sun. Uh, well, absolutely. We just await uh, the announcement from the ISRO right now. And uh, what we see is that uh, within a few minutes from now, the uh, Aditya L1 will be entering its uh, final destination, what we call Hello Orbit, which is the L1 point, the Lagrange point. Uh, what we have uh, around the sun is L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. India has chose uh, L1 point, wherein in, in some minutes from now, the, the spacecraft will be entering this halo orbit and uh, any eclipse will not be stopping any view uh, to the sun and shortly will be also joined by uh, R.C. Kapoor, the space scientist. But till now, uh, till then, we'll be awaiting uh, the ma main announcement by the ISRO is what uh, we are getting to hear that after some time uh, from now, uh, the, the spacecraft is set to uh, reach its destination and we are awaiting the uh, official announcement uh, with regard to this. You must give us an idea uh, how long before we expect that official announcement or when is it slated for and what happens after that, after it reaches its final destination. Uh, well, uh, let me also tell you that once it uh, enters the hello orbit, uh, the spacecraft will take approximately 178 days to complete an entire uh, uh, orbital uh, journey of the sun. And also, uh, let me tell you that any eclipses, as, as far as uh, eclipses are concerned, nothing can stop the view of uh, Aditya L1. And it will be also then uh, going across uh, to study the corona. Uh, the, the biggest question uh, uh, arise here is like, why is the outer atmosphere, the outer the surface of the sun is more hotter compared to the uh, the surface of the uh, sun and also let me tell you that this is called corona and the corona will be studied by this Aditya L1 apart from that photosphere chromosphere the magnetic fields uh, uh, around the sun uh, that will be in fact studies and remember NASA had in fact uh, launched a, a Parker probe uh, in December 2021 which had in fact gone very closer to uh, corona it had collected uh, uh, the, the magnetic field and the particles are around the sun uh, for the samples and that had also studied in fact but India had has right now 
only decided to reach the L1 point from where it will be uh, properly viewing the sun. It will be studying the corona magnetic field, the, the, the X-ray particles and chromosphere, photosphere will be studied for, through this particular mission. Uh, 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 the moment this particular halo orbit uh, uh, maneuvering happens and after that it, the, the Aditya L1 will be proceeding to uh, uh, for the research work around the sun right. to study all this uh, uh, important aspects. Well, of course, it's already been sending in images. It's already been studying the solar glares as well. But let's also remind our viewers how it didn't just make a direct route and trajectory when it comes to going towards uh, the L1. This is the orbit that you can see. There were several such very complicated energy-saving maneuvers which were made by this aircraft to reach L1. That was the final destination where we are expecting today after that final maneuver that it is going to be carrying out, it is going to be placed in L1. Now, L1 is the only unique spot where they're going to ensure that there is enough equilibrium in the gravity of the earth as well as the sun. So this provides a area, the ideal spot for Aditya L1 to land there and then to observe the sun and get an unhindered view of the sun devoid of any eclipses. Of course, the entire uh, distance that it has already managed to travel over the last four years, uh, for four months has been that of 1.5 million kilometers. And as you can see, several such very complicated uh, maneuvers have been performed by Aditya in order to... Uh, uh, reach L1. That is going to be the final destination today. Meanwhile, let's also go across to all our panelists today so that we have a better understanding of what really is going to be the significance of this. In fact, Jijit uh, Nadumori Ravi is joining us. He's a former scientist at ISRO and he was also interestingly a part of many of the GSLV launches in the past as well as the Chandrayaan-1 study phase as well. We are also being joined by Pranav Sharma. He's an astrologer and a space historian as well. We'll be coming to, across to you, Pranav, in just a bit. But Mr. Ravi, I'm going to come to you first because you must explain to us the significance of Aditya having reached at this point after the final maneuver. We are all very hopeful that it is going to be as successful as the five previous maneuvers that it's already managed to successfully do. Now, once it reaches there, what happens from here onwards? Yes, uh, so it's a kind of very exciting for the entire scientific community. And uh, when we say 15 lakhs, it is uh, more, 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 more or less around uh, five times the distance uh, which is for, to the moon. So after the lunar successful lunar mission of Chandrayaan-3, uh, it's very interesting that we are focusing on the Aditya or the sun. Uh, and definitely, like as soon as we reach, uh, is all, as you have mentioned, some of the experimental studies have already uh, initiated. So uh, we have... Uh, Many of the instruments ready to capture the different aspects of uh, uh, the the solar spectrum, the solar electromagnetic radiation from the sun. So one of them is the uh, this uh, ultraviolet related uh, spectrometer studies, and then you have Helios uh, that is actually focusing on the high energy X-ray glimpse of the solar flares. And uh, there are a lot of instrumentation which is focusing on the solar wind. And as far as I am concerned, I am more interested in understanding or the focusing on the studies on the solar wind because the solar wind is basically the the the, the, the basis of the weather of the solar system mm. and uh, once you have a proper understanding of the solar wind including its patterns and its distribution all, all over the uh, the solar system especially the inner solar system it has a very tremendous impact because it, it has a kind of a significant impact on any spacecraft that is flying in the uh, uh, solar system especially uh, nearby the sun like in the uh, Earth, Venus, and uh, Mercury, and up to Mars. So, so any kind of spacecraft, even uh, I was part of the Chandrayaan-1 uh, and uh, the Chandrayaan-2 also we have seen uh, the, the last terminal termination of the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter has because of some impact of the solar wind. So that is actually extremely significant even to ISRO's on assets, which is already uh, like uh, orbiting around the uh, uh, moon and uh, uh, our uh, Mangalyaan, et cetera. So solar wind has kind of, kind of impact. So that is another very interesting area. But of course, uh, the other instrumentation, like the, the instruments that studies the, the photosphere, the chromosphere, as well as the corona, all these things are extremely interesting and important. And uh, now we have we have reached the stable uh, Lagrange point. It is one of the, uh, the, the important right. uh, and the most important point for uh, studying the, uh, the sun without any eclipses. Mm. So that is the importance of Lagrange point. 
So an so, unhindered yeah, view of the sun is what it will manage to get from this exact point. I'll just come back to you. In fact, let's also quickly remind our viewers, we've put together a very comprehensive package which is going to explain to you the journey of ISRO, how ISRO today has arrived where it is on the brink of this massive solar exploration that it has already undertaken. But what's been the journey behind it? Watch this. It was once a very distant dream. It looked far beyond India's reach. India's aspirations were ignored and looked down upon. Our country painted as the land of farmers and snake charmers by the West. But as Mahatma Gandhi once said, first they will ignore you, then they will laugh at you, then they will fight you then you will win. We have a majestic liftoff of LTM 3 M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. With resilience, firm resolve, and perseverance, India proved its mettle in its space voyage. The space journey began in 1962 with the formation of the Indian National Committee for Space Research, which was later renamed ISRO. With the blood, sweat and determination of dedicated scientists, the dream was slowly becoming a reality. In 1975, ISRO built India's first satellite, Aryabhatta, which was launched by the Soviet Space Agency into Cosmos. There was no looking back. An array of such space explorations followed. 61 years after the first satellite launch, Atmanirbhar Bharat script history in golden letters by successfully landing Chandrayaan-3 on the south pole of the lunar surface. But this was just the beginning of the new space odyssey of Naya Bharat. Leading leaps and bounds in the global space race, there are various projects in the pipeline to explore the unexplored enormous outer space and planets. From the Venus orbiter missions to sending humans to space and another Mars mission, ISRO is working on a galaxy of Atmanirbhar projects. Once mocked as an outsider to the space club, now India is there in the lead showing the world how it's done and done within a budget. Bureau Report, Times Now. With that, there is some big breaking news which is coming in. The Prime Minister has himself tweeted about this latest maneuver, which we are expecting very shortly. We are going to be putting that up on your screens as well. The Prime Minister's, there you have it, the Prime Minister's tweet. It says, I'm going to read it out for you. India creates yet another landmark, India's first solar observatory. Aditya L1 reaches its destination. In fact, he goes on to say that it is a testament to the relentless dedication of our scientists in realizing amongst the most complex and and intricate space missions. I join the nation in applauding this extraordinary feat. We will continue to pursue new frontiers of science for the benefit of humanity. The Prime Minister himself lauding Team Istro. Let me go across to Pranav who's joining us an astronomer as well as a space historian. Pranav, the Prime Minister has tweeted about it. Uh, why would you say that this is going to be a very critical phase, a breakthrough phase for India when it comes to foraying into the space-based solar observation as India has managed to successfully do today? It's your own observatory. Mm -hmm. Right, right there. There in like graduate point one, mm -hmm. you have capacity, you have academic capability to analyze the data, you have the algorithms that will mine that data and give you some breakthrough results. You're not doing secondary studies, you're doing primary studies. Mm -hmm. All your astronomers and data scientists and other people who are relevant to uh, the, this kind of research are directly primarily involved. And on the top of it, it's an enormous capacity building. Mm. And what you're basically doing is it's it's also extremely important in, in terms of geopolitics 
when it comes uh, in terms of science, because you are one of the pioneering people who would have hold of the data which comes directly from Lagrangian point one regarding space weather. You have the 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 spectrographs data. You have the coronal mass ejection data. Mm. You have the solar flare data. You have the solar cycle data. You have the UV data. You have all these kind of images. Simplify that for us, Pranav. Why is it important for us mm. to understand? the entire space atmosphere and the kind of impact that you have from the sun. Simplify it for our viewers. It, the, the sun is an essential star uh, for all life forms on Earth. Hmm. And whatever we do, it's, a, it's our primary energy source. And it is also responsible for major uh, problems that happen when you're putting your satellites in, in space. So two very important things that, three actually very important things that will happen when you are looking into uh, sun is one, you are adding to the research question that why sun, is, the, so, the sun uh, chromosphere is so hot, which has been, you know, uh, bothering us for the longest time. Uh, the second thing that you'll do, you'll understand space weather, mm. you'll see how the cycles are working, it'll be uh, there at the peak of the uh, solar uh, cycle ne next year, which happens next year. And it will give you direct benefit of uh, understanding uh, solar rejections. It will give you direct benefit of understanding the solar cycle. It will also, you know, you know, help you put a model on how solar cycles work and what are the things that can happen. And whenever there's a peak cycle, there are direct repercussions that happen on the planet. There was, I think, uh, uh, sometimes ago, there was a power grid failure also, which had happened when there was so much particle right. ejections that we were, looking, we were looking into, right? So those are the kind of things uh, mm. that uh, become very important. That's, uh, the, the other thing that becomes extremely important is that, you know, that I've been saying repeatedly, it's an enormous capacity building. Mm. You, you're testing, you, if you have a theoretical model that needs to be tested on a star or the stellar atmosphere. It, your probe is right there. Absolutely. You can do a breakthrough. It's like it's like if you have a LIGO observatory in your own country, mm. the data that you're analyzing, you are doing the breakthrough and you're winning the Nobel Prize. Yes. The significance of that. And of course, this is just paving the way for the future. Prime Minister Modi himself has, uh, has uh, congratulated the entire team at ISRO for this yet another successful orbit launch. Thank you so much, Jijit, Ravi, as well as uh, Pranav for joining us here, explaining it to us as to the significance of this and why this is a big milestone for India when it comes to not just space, but also solar observatory and exploration. With that, a short break.